another real talk reaction. This one's for Parks and Recreations. The Did office. You parks? Oh. <laughs> and you said the whole thing. Like, what are you doing? The office 316. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we straight to Parks. I know. Welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction. This one here is for The Office, Season 3, Episode Number 16. Hey, peeps, don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash the like button, as a matter of fact. Hit the notification bell as well. Come on back to tell the algorithm is doing what it's supposed to be doing, like it's supposed to be doing it. Thank you. All right, just a couple comments from the last episode. Raina coming through to say, oh, just the cringe of Michael. He is at his worst here. Yeah, he was really rough. That was uh, uh, the wedding. Yeah, uh, yeah, he made it all about him. Okay. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, KR89 <laughs> says, two of my favorite moments when Michael says he's a wine... I can't say the word right now. A wine Not connoisseur. Cool. Thank you, yes. <laughs> still use the line, this is a white, when pretending I'm cool with any fancy drinks, yeah. lol. Also, so funny when Kevin is drumming and says, it's a very serious situation, and immediately plays Roxanne. That sends me. The thing with Jim and Pam, the show aired it once a week on Thursdays, lol, and so much of the buildup was week to week, will they, won't they. It's been hashed out in many comment sections, but some of the relationship stuff def definitely does not hold up, are actually quite toxic, but I greatly appreciate that you said you're here for the ride, and that's a good way to look at it. Love the reaction. Nice. Last comment from Monica who says the main problem between Jim and Pam is lack of communication. Pam won't confess her feelings for Jim because she thinks he's in love with Karen, but Jim won't leave Karen until he knows Pam wants to be with him. Freak. The difference is now and when Jim originally told uh, yeah. Pam he loved her was she genuinely thought she wanted to marry Roy. Pam is the single one now and Jim knows his feelings for Pam are stronger than they are for Karen. I think Jim not making his move since confessing to Karen that he was in love with Pam is on him and he shouldn't be jealous if Pam moves on with Roy Preach. or someone else at this point. He knows Pam isn't the type to make the first move, but he can't be surprised that acting like he's happy with Karen isn't going to eventually push Pam away. By the way, it has to be Way worse to see Karen and Jim flirt directly in front of you every day if you're Pam versus when Jim only had to see Roy occasionally in the warehouse when he and Pam were engaged. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, very good comments. Very accurate. Yes. Great, great comments, great insight, great perspective. Yep. All right, let's jump into episode 16 right now. Oh, hey, Kevin. Nice of you to join us. Where were you? My tire blew out on the way here, Michael. Uh -huh. I almost died. I went into this skid. Pop quiz. What? Why well, say a special day? I almost died. Today is a special day because yeah, I so. am being honored as a Why he waiting on visiting me? professor, special lecturer, emeritus. How did you? How did? How did you? He know? will be a guest speaker in the emerging enterprises class in business school. Kevin, emerging enterprises business school. Wow! If you bring your boss to class, it automatically bumps you up a full letter grade. So, I'd be stupid not to. <laughs> right. no, a boss so is like a teacher, uh, and I am like the cool teacher, like Mr. Handel. This is gonna be bad. Mr. Handel would hang out with us, and he would tell us awesome jokes, and he actually hooked up with one of the students, um, and then like twelve other kids came forward. It was in all the papers. <laughs> Another <laughs> eighth grade for us. Oh my God! Yeah, right. And it was eighth grade. Wait, it was eighth grade. Why does he remember him so well? Here we go, college roadshow. Now bring our A game. What is the most inspiring thing I ever said to you? Don't be an idiot. Changed my life. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you say? What? What's so weird? The bat. I mean, I know it's about to bite me, but like, there's no vampire. I feel so tingly, so strangely powerful. Strangely powerful. <laughs> oh, <Come on>. oh, <laughs> that's not how you become bad. Now, I don't know what's happening. So stupid. I present the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin Scranton, Michael Scott. I just want to die. I just want to die. He doesn't even know that he's just been insulted. <sighs> I hate my upper name, boss. <clears throat> I don't know. Hello, everyone. I am Michael Scott. Hello, I'm Brandon Delta, CEO of the teaching company. And I 
I'd like to start today by inspiring you. May I borrow someone's textbook, please? Thank you. What have we here? Ooh, economics. Very, very interesting. <gasps> So you cannot learn from books. Oh my God, babe. Hey, Replace these pages with Stop. life lessons. And then you will have a book that is worth its weight in gold. I know these are expensive, um, but the lesson is priceless. Good. All right. I think you're inspired. Shall we proceed? There are four kinds of business. Tourism, food service, railroads, and sales, and hospitals slash manufacturing, and air travel. It's here to stay. But how can you compete against a company with the resources of a nationwide chain? David will always beat Goliath. But there's five Goliaths. There's Staples, Office... Yeah, Mark. yeah. You know what else is facing five Goliaths? America. <laughs> and we sell paper. And we sell paper. They both in a village right now, I'm really proud of you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now that is what she's trying to hear. And He's like a people. You invest yeah. in people. Do you have something in your pocket? Okay. What? You got some more candy bars, babe. Sorry. It's a chunk of it. <laughs> it is it's a, chunk. a message. It is an inspiration. It is a source of beauty. Good job. Right. So and without sweet. paper, it could not have happened. Unless you had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, 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 I sit back there now every day. Uh, why was that stupid? Well, all right, that was episode 16 of The Office, and by far to me, right now, this was the funniest one yet. The funniest one right here. I mean, I'm, I'm hackling all the way from beginning to end, and Michael yeah, played a what? big part of it. A big part of it. He was hilarious and thoughtful at the end of this episode right here. He he became a crazy person and a human at the same time on this one. So this was just a, a really, really great episode. Even Jim pranking damn Dwight with the, the bitten by uh, Brilliant. Uh, so bat. good. And man, that was just hilarious. And then you got um, the, just that whole segment of just Michael trying to do his little speech and then him being assaulted. By by um, Ryan. Ryan about man that that you can see it in his face he was being real but I'm glad he came back to the office and did what he had to do and put his ass back in the damn over there with his girl so yeah he's gonna hate that without being punished but Michael was dropping some bars in this episode man I mean and it just shows that he really cares about his business when you bring that up that's when he turned to a straight man all day long. And he played no games with that. So, And I thought it was very touching when he came in and bought that picture from Pam. And I think that's what Pam needed right there. Not any fakeness at all. So, I love this episode, man. Cannot wait to see uh, another one. I can see now. Um, this episode solidified it for me. But I can see why we've gotten so much... Uh, not animosity, but pushed back initially in the first two seasons when we say anything negative about Michael. Because you guys have seen this Michael. Like, you guys know who Michael is. Yeah. But, like, as first-time reactors, it takes us a minute to get to this point, right? Um, and this episode solidifies it for me, too. Like, he melted the mess out of my heart. It was yeah. so... 
and I had his back even with the entire situation with Ryan, which typically is not the case for me. Like typically, like I, I'm Michael's at fault, right? Almost ninety nine percent of the time for mm -hmm. me. But at this point, I was like, that was fucked up. But what Ryan did was not cool. Yeah. He set him up. Uh, Michael thought he was legitimately going there to do something, and Ryan clearly knows Michael's. Uh, stance on trying to be a mentor towards Ryan, even though he didn't go to college. So, like, this was just all kinds of... Ryan gets an L for this episode. <laughs> like, it was just not cool. It was shady as hell. And I love that Michael took the upper hand as far as being like, I'm not firing you. That's not what we do. We mm -hmm. invest in people, but you're going to take a step back, and I have a scenario that's going to work for me in that. So I thought that was great. And the fact that, like, He's the only person that genuinely came out to support Pam with no bullshit, no judgment, just full on support. Really, re, uh, really highlighted his approach as far as the people are the most important. And I, I thought it was funny, but like I take back laughing at it about him saying business is personal because that is like the conflict of that phrase. Like mm -hmm. it's just business, and like to Michael, it's not. It is everything about his business is personal, personal for the people yeah. that work there to what they're doing. I, it was just so sweet. It's my favorite. Probably favorite Michael. Ep it is my favorite Michael episode, hands down. Yeah. Like I, I thought, like I had his back the whole episode. I have so, to like, agree. Complete favorite Michael episode. That just goes. That makes it one of my favorite episodes to date because, like, I can finally see the full extent of like the the love for Michael. Now on the other side, Jib killed this episode as well. Like killed it. Like completely dominated yeah. the entire prank. It's my favorite prank to date. I love vampire movies, so this was so good to me. And if we continue it when it goes to the next episode, oh my god, I like love this so much. And a Creed single handedly probably oh, had yeah. the best delivery, yeah, yeah, best yeah, delivery yeah. of the episode, and that's saying a lot on an episode that had so much hilarity. But Creed, yeah. his like deadpan, yeah. deadpan self, like not even like phased by. Oh, it was so good. It, the setup couldn't be any better. Yeah. And I think we were laughing a lot through the episode, where we probably missed other parts too. But this is easily one of my favorite episodes as yeah, well. Yeah. Man, it's, I can't say a lot of enough good things. Also, Kelly's reaction to Ryan it was so perfectly at the end as far as him moving back there. Yeah. And the fact that she's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be your life. I'm going to be your life. And like, she's hyping herself all the way back mm -hmm. up again. It was just everything worked this episode. Everything worked. I loved it so much. And I absolutely cannot wait for the next episode. Yeah. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for The Office, Season 3, Episode 16. And until next time, people, peace.